Welcome back everyone, I'm Jordan Giesecke, and this is The Limiting Factor. In Tesla's fourth quarter earnings call of 2020, Elon said that the rear underbody of the Cybertruck would require an 8,000 ton gigapress. This raises an important question. Why does the Cybertruck need gigacastings if it already has an exoskeleton? And if the Cybertruck has an exoskeleton and gigacastings, why would it also need a structural battery pack? To answer those questions, today we'll look at how the exoskeleton will work compared to conventional unibody and body-on-frame designs. Then, to round things off, I'll take an educated guess at the weight of the Cybertruck compared to the F-150 Lightning. Before we begin, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. This is the support that gives me the freedom to avoid chasing the algorithm and sponsors. As always, the links for support are in the description. First, it's worth noting that we won't know exactly how Tesla designed the Cybertruck until we get a teardown. This video is my best guess at what Tesla will do based on the information that's publicly available. Furthermore, I'm still learning about vehicle structures and some of what I state here is based on my best attempt to make sense of what I've learned. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's start by comparing the structure of a car with a truck and go from there. On the top left of this image is the vehicle structure of the original Model 3. The rear underbody was a patchwork of welded steel stampings, like a 3D quilt. This was improved to what we see on the bottom left with the Model Y. One large casting, also called a giga casting, is now used in the rear underbody instead of the steel stampings. Currently, the Model Ys produced in Tesla's Fremont and Shanghai factories use a rear underbody casting. The upcoming Model Ys that'll be produced at Tesla's Next Generation Austin and Berlin factories will also use a Giga casting at the front of the vehicle. Much the same way that Hot Wheels are made out of a single piece of cast aluminum, these two castings will make the Model Y easier to manufacture. If you want to know more about what Giga casting is, check out my original Giga casting video. Regardless of whether stamped or gigacast parts are used for the underbody, the front and rear underbody are joined with other parts to form an assembly called a unibody. Unibody is short for unitized body. Unitized, of course, means unifying several parts into one unit. In a unibody design, the unibody serves as both the structural platform and the body of the vehicle. By structural platform, I mean that the electric motors, battery pack, suspension, wheels, and tires are attached directly to the unibody. By body, I mean the aerodynamic shell that encloses the passenger compartment. In Tesla vehicles, the electric motors, battery pack, suspension, wheels, and tires form an assembly called the skateboard. After the unibody assembly and skateboard assembly are complete, the skateboard is lifted up and bolted to the bottom of the unibody. As a side note, you may notice some duplication between the battery pack and the structural floor pan of the vehicle that I've marked with pink stars. In the next generation of the Model Y, that duplication may be eliminated. That is, the structural floor pan may no longer exist, and the battery pack would serve as both the floor of the passenger compartment and provide rigidity in the bottom of the vehicle. If that's the case, then the seats can be mounted directly to the skateboard, and when the skateboard is lifted into the bottom of the unibody, the seats can go with it because there would be no structural floor pan to get in the way. This is much easier than the typical process, which involves awkwardly shoehorning the seats in through the doors. After the skateboard is lifted into position and bolted in place, from a structural standpoint, the vehicle is complete. How does the unibody and skateboard design differ from a truck? Trucks use a body-on-frame design. The words body-on-frame are fairly self-explanatory. The body and the frame are two separate parts. The body is the passenger compartment, and in the case of a truck, it can also include a bed. The frame is the structural platform that the electric motors, battery pack, suspension, wheels, and tires attach to. Using two separate parts for the body and frame makes the vehicle heavier than a unibody design because the body is dead weight. 
but it also makes the vehicle more durable because the frame provides heavy-duty support for anything that's carried in the bed. Furthermore, when a frame does fail, the frame absorbs most of the energy and the body remains relatively unharmed. In many cases, the frame can actually be bent back into the correct shape by a body shop. If the frame is bent in a unibody vehicle, the entire vehicle is warped as the energy is transferred throughout the body and the vehicle can become a write-off. Despite the heavier weight and lower fuel efficiency of the body-on-frame design, truck owners prefer it because it's more durable and easier to repair than a unibody design. Additionally, manufacturers prefer a body-on-frame design because it's easier to design and cheaper to manufacture. Now that we understand the difference between the unibody design of cars and the body-on-frame design of trucks, let's compare the body-on-frame structure of trucks to the exoskeleton design of the Cybertruck. We'll start with what Tesla means by exoskeleton. As we saw earlier, the unibody attaches directly to the skateboard. This makes for a lightweight vehicle with high fuel efficiency, but it's not good for carrying heavy loads. With a body-on-frame design, a steel frame is used as an intermediary between the skateboard and the body to provide reinforcement, which allows trucks to carry heavier loads. But this also makes trucks heavier and less fuel efficient. What if there was some way to make a vehicle structure that was lightweight, like unibody designs, but also heavy duty and easy to manufacture, like body on frame designs? That's exactly what the Cybertruck's exoskeleton is designed to achieve. An exoskeleton design will be similar to a unibody design because it won't use a frame, but it'll be able to carry the heavy loads that a vehicle with a frame can. Instead of a frame, the outer skin of the Cybertruck will provide rigidity between the front and rear wheels. The question is, how is that done? Let's start with the electric Ford F-150 Lightning and go from there. The electric motors are nested between the frame rails, and the Lightning likely uses the frame as one of the attachment points for the motors. Then, in the center of the vehicle, the battery pack is shaped around the frame, appears to be bolted to the frame, and is carried under the vehicle like cargo. That is, the frame appears to form the structure that the powertrain is built around and mounted to. But it also serves another function. When the bed of the truck is loaded, the weight applies force to the bed, which is part of the body, then to the frame, and then to the suspension, wheels, and tires. That force also creates stresses along the length of the frame like a seesaw. In other words, you might think of the suspension, tires, and wheels as a fulcrum, and the frame as a lever. In the case of the Cybertruck, the Giga castings will be the mounting point for the suspension, wheels, and tires, and that assembly will serve as the fulcrum. But we still need a lever. As we saw with a unibody vehicle, the body is the frame, but it's light duty and can't carry heavy loads. Trucks add a steel frame to the body to create load carrying capacity. With the exoskeleton of the Cybertruck, the frame is shifted from the core of the vehicle to the outer skin. The skin of the Cybertruck is 3 millimeters thick, whereas body-on-frame and unibody vehicles use several layers of weaker steel that's not designed for heavy loads. I'll explain this more later in the video when we compare the skin of a conventional vehicle with the Cybertruck. Shifting the frame from the core of the vehicle to the outer skin of the vehicle has a benefit that's not obvious. One of the most powerful factors that determines rigidity is thickness, even if the structure is hollow. This is why truck frames use box steel. Box steel is exactly what it sounds like, steel formed by four thin walls rather than solid steel. If the relatively slender box steel of a regular truck frame generates enough rigidity for heavy-duty hauling and towing, what happens if the box steel is the thickness of the entire vehicle? The answer is maximum rigidity and strength. With all that rigidity, what's the purpose of the structural battery pack? The structural battery pack is slung between the front and rear giga castings and creates torsional rigidity to stabilize the four corners of the vehicle as it stalks around corners. That is, it serves the same purpose in the Cybertruck as it will for Tesla's other vehicles. The only difference is that the Cybertruck exoskeleton is behaving as an ultra-strong unibody that adds the resilience needed for a heavy-duty truck. Moving along, 
Why did Tesla go with a triangular shape for the Cybertruck instead of a more sculpted look? Two reasons. First, a triangle's the strongest shape there is. With the body-on-frame design, there was a slender boxed frame to absorb load stresses. With a triangular exoskeleton design, the stresses from a load are distributed throughout the body, reducing the chances of structural failure. That's important because it prevents things like this from happening. The second reason Tesla went with a hard edge triangular design is because stainless steel is difficult to stamp, especially if it's the cold rolled ultra hard stainless steel that Tesla will be using. Ultra hard stainless steel is so hard that it can wear down or break stamping presses. Additionally, hard steels tend to be brittle, meaning they snap rather than bend, making them a poor candidate for stamping. Instead of stamping, ultra-hard stainless steel can be scored with a laser and folded, which is why the Cybertruck looks like origami. As a bonus, overall, scoring with a laser and folding should also be cheaper than a conventional body-on-frame design. It eliminates the expensive stamping machines needed for the dozens of stamped body panels. And, of course, with the stamping machines, it eliminates many of the robots needed to weld all of those panels together and the need for a paint shop because stainless steel doesn't need a paint job to prevent corrosion. As we see in this image, there does appear to be stampings used in the Cybertruck, but my view is that those are just for the door jams and to serve as a lightweight space frame. By lightweight space frame, I mean a lightweight stamped stainless steel or aluminum frame that would form the door jams, firewall, and provide mounting points for interior trim. Although I said earlier that stainless steel is difficult to stamp, there are actually some grades of stainless steel that are suitable for stamping. They just aren't as strong. Aluminum would probably be preferable because it's lighter, but either material could be used. The space frame and door jams wouldn't need to be structural because load stresses will be taken care of by the exoskeleton at the skin of the vehicle. While we're on the topic of door jams, it could be my imagination running away with itself, but there looks to be a deep channel where a rubber seal could fit like a gasket. A heavy-duty seal here could mean that the Cybertruck could be somewhat amphibious. It might sound crazy, but it's already been done before by the Amphicar in the 1960s, which had doors that opened and closed normally, but were watertight. The Cybertruck clearly wouldn't have a propeller, but the wheels might be enough to provide some propulsion. And, given that the Cybertruck will be stainless steel and aluminum, there would be little risk of corrosion. Let's dig a little deeper into how the sides of the Cybertruck exoskeleton could compare to a conventional body design. On screen are the stamped layers of the Model 3 body. The blue, yellow, and red areas correspond to mild, high-strength, and ultra-high-strength steel, which, respectively, probably have tensile strength ratings of around 350, 650, and 1,000 megapascals. I say probably because sometimes manufacturers don't use a standardized definition of mild, high, or ultra-high-strength steel. How strong is the stainless steel Tesla is using in the Cybertruck? At this point, we don't know, but it should be high performance given that it was developed for Starship by some of the best materials engineers in the world. We do know it's ultra-hard stainless steel, which can achieve strength ratings of 1,500 megapascals or more, which is about 50% stronger than the average I could find for ultra-high strength steel. Back to the Model 3 structure. The sheet metal on the far right in blue is made from mild steel because it's the external body paneling, which is mostly there for aerodynamics and styling. The sheet metal for the deeper two layers of the side structure in yellow and red are mostly high strength and ultra high strength steel because they provide structural and crash absorption functions. These three layers on the sides of the vehicle will likely be replaced with one layer of stainless steel in the Cybertruck. The steel in each of those layers would be 0.9 millimeters to 1.1 millimeters thick, for a total of about 3 millimeters. Tesla advised that the thickness of the steel on the sides of the Cybertruck will be 3 millimeters, and it'll be ultra hard stainless steel. That is, the total thickness of the metal on the sides of the Cybertruck will probably be similar to the total thickness of the material on a unibody vehicle. 
but it'll probably be two to three times as strong for the same weight because the steel used will be solid ultra hard stainless steel rather than a mix of weaker steels and that's before considering any strength benefits provided by the triangular frame. That is, overall, the exoskeleton design should weigh about the same as a unibody design and will probably be much stronger than a typical body-on-frame truck structure. Some might argue that the doors of the Cybertruck will add a lot of weight to the vehicle, but I don't know if that's necessarily the case. This image from a Tesla patent application compares the door schematic of a vehicle with an exoskeleton to the door schematic of a typical vehicle. Although the sheet metal would be thinner for the conventional door, there's extra bulk within the door because steel reinforcement is needed for side impacts. Although the Cybertruck door will likely still be heavier due to the 3mm sheet metal, I don't think it'll be drastically heavier because it only needs one layer of structure with no internal support. More importantly, it'll be easier and cheaper to manufacture because it uses fewer parts. However, we also need to take into account that Tesla has a lot more experience with lightweighting electric vehicles than any other company and a better engineering culture. So even if the Cybertruck picks up some weight in the doors, there'll be trimming weight in other parts of the vehicle. With all that in mind, it's time to take an educated guess at what the weight of the Cybertruck could be. I'll use the F-150 Lightning as a comparison vehicle. It's perfect as a comparison because Tesla designed the Cybertruck to be the same dimensions as the F-150. As far as I'm aware, the F-150 Lightning isn't using a structural battery pack or gigacastings. Tesla advised that these two innovations alone will strip out 10% of the weight from their vehicles. The F-150 Lightning is estimated to weigh 6,500 pounds. 10% 10 of 6,500 would be 650 pounds. Next, let's factor in the weight savings from removing the frame. I couldn't find what I'd consider a reliable estimate, but my understanding is that an F-150 frame weighs about 200 pounds, so removing it and using an exoskeleton would save Tesla about 200 pounds. As a reminder, the exoskeleton appears to use about the same amount of steel in the body as a conventional vehicle, but it's a higher strength steel and uses stronger triangular geometry. In total, the 650 pounds saved from the Giga castings and structural battery pack, plus the 200 pounds saved from removing the frame, means the Cybertruck could weigh around 850 pounds less than the F-150 Lightning, or 5,650 pounds. That's a good back of the napkin estimate, but the reality will be a bit more complex. First, 6,500 pounds is the only weight estimate I found for the F-150 Lightning. I don't know if that's for the 230 mile range version or the 300 mile range version. If we give Ford the benefit of the doubt and assume 6,500 pounds is for the 300 mile range version, the base version of the Lightning would weigh around 400 pounds less at 6,100 pounds. Second, we're comparing the F-150 to a hypothetical Cybertruck. The Cybertruck will come with several battery pack choices. The choice of battery pack will affect the end vehicle weight by a thousand pounds or more. Let's assume we're talking about the base version of the Cybertruck for an apples to apples comparison. Third, we haven't taken into account the fact that the Cybertruck will have a more efficient powertrain and a better drag coefficient. That could allow Tesla to shed another 200 pounds or more. If we take into account those three variables, the base weight of the Cybertruck could be around 5,090 pounds. That's of course the base weight, and the weight range for all trims could be around 5,090 to 6,650 pounds. Is that estimate realistic? At the Cybertruck unveil, Elon said that the Cybertruck would weigh the same as an F-150. At that time, the F-150 Lightning didn't exist yet, so we would have been referring to the ICE version. The ICE version of the F-150 weighs between 4,000 to 5,500 pounds depending on factors like engine option and cab size. Elon didn't specify which F-150 and which Cybertruck trims he was comparing, but I think he was comparing a high-performance F-150 Super Crew to the base version of the Cybertruck. 
an F-150 with a Super Crew cab and a high-performance engine would weigh 5,000 to 5,500 pounds. And, as I just estimated, the base version of the Cybertruck would come in at a similar weight range, at a minimum of 5,090 pounds. Is it fair to compare a high-end F-150 to an entry-level Cybertruck? I think so. The F-150 Super Crew with a high-performance engine would seat five people to the Cybertruck 6, but that's close enough. The 0-60 time of the base version of the Cybertruck will be less than 6.5 seconds, whereas the F-150 King Ranch goes 0-60 in about 6.2 seconds. The F-150 would have a lot more range, but would also cost 58 to 68,000 versus the 40 to 50,000 for the base version of the Cybertruck. As an interim summary, when compared to Ford's battery electric F-150 Lightning, with range being equal, I expect the Cybertruck to weigh up to around 1,000 pounds less, but at least 650 pounds less. I've seen concerns online that the Cybertruck could be much heavier because Tesla's looking to get it registered as a Class 2B or potentially Class 3 truck. A 2B truck, for example, has a gross vehicle weight rating of 8,500 to 10,000 pounds. Some people are assuming that's how much the Cybertruck will weigh, but those concerns appear to be misguided. When regulators calculate gross vehicle weight for a vehicle classification, they take into account curb weight, which is the empty vehicle, plus passengers and payload. That is, vehicle classes aren't based on empty weight, but rather the weight of a fully loaded vehicle. For a Cybertruck, across trims, the gross vehicle weight could be around 9,800 pounds, despite an empty or curb weight that could be around 5,700 pounds. As a final note, it's worth mentioning the other advantages that stem from the Cybertruck's unique design. The F-150 has a maximum payload capacity of 2,000 pounds and a 0-60 to 60 of 4.4 seconds. This is compared to the 3,500 pound payload capacity and 2.9 seconds 0-60 to 60 of the highest trim version of the Cybertruck. That is, the Cybertruck has a payload capacity 1,500 pounds higher and a 0-60 to 60 time that's 1.5 seconds faster. My view is that most of the 1,500 pound payload advantage that the Cybertruck will have over the Lightning is from the 1,000 pound weight reduction that I've estimated by taking into account the exoskeleton, giga castings, structural battery, lower drag coefficient, and more efficient powertrain. These advantages would also, of course, contribute to the 1.5 second faster 0-60 to 60 time that the Cybertruck will have over the Lightning. But there's more to the story than that. The Cybertruck will be bulletproof. The bed will be more rugged than the aluminum or steel used in other truck beds. There will be no paint to chip, scratch, or oxidize, and due to the aluminum giga castings and stainless steel body, it will be nearly impervious to corrosion and therefore never rust. In summary, thanks to its exoskeleton, structural battery, and gigacasting design, the Cybertruck will be tougher, stronger, lighter, faster, easier to manufacture, and have better fuel efficiency than competing body-on-frame designs. The gigacasting will tie together the suspension, wheels, tires, and motors in the front and rear of the vehicle. The structural battery pack will serve to minimize diagonal twisting by tying the four corners of the gigacastings together. The exoskeleton will create a thick cross-section of steel to create rigidity and strength along the length of the vehicle and maximize that rigidity and strength with the help of its triangular design. Finally, there will likely be a space frame that will serve a non-structural but functional role for door jams, the firewall, and mounting points for interior trim. If that all goes to plan, and there doesn't appear to be any first principle reasons why it wouldn't, then the design of the Cybertruck will simply be the best way to manufacture a vehicle. Some people don't like the design aesthetic, and to each their own, but I'd prefer to have the A10 Warthog of trucks. As a personal note, I've wanted a stainless steel car since I saw the DeLorean when I was a kid. Stainless steel seemed like a more durable alternative to the rust buckets that populated the roads in the 80s. Paint jobs have gotten a lot better since then, but paint can never hold a candle to a full stainless steel body. Add to that, the batteries in the longer range versions of the Cybertruck should last more than 500,000 miles. 
With those two things in mind, I can easily justify about any expense for a vehicle that'll last 30 to 40 years with minimal maintenance. Can seat a family with luggage, can take a stray bullet, and can haul stone or haul ass. The next video of the Gigacasting series will be the final video, where I summarize the arguments against Gigacastings and what my counterarguments are after three months of research and six videos. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon with the link at the end of the video or as a YouTube member. You can find the details in the description. A special thanks to Lowesdown, Paul Meyer, Teresa and Lou Jalbert, Hugh Waller, Mark Barb, and Lars for your generous support of the channel, my YouTube members, and all the other patrons listed in the credits. I appreciate all of your support, and thanks for tuning in.